Hi, welcome back to my channel and another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing David Cronenberg's The Fly from 1986. Now this is a remake of a 50s classic, but as far as I'm aware, this is the most known version, the most well-renowned version of the film. And it's said to be one of David Cronenberg's best. I have actually seen a good handful of his films, but for whatever reason, I've just never got around to The Fly. And it's been on my watch list for some uh, for some time now, so I decided last night to give it a watch. What a film. This is a damn good horror film. I, I, I can't believe how much I liked this. And, you know, as well as being a very memorable and disturbing, gruesome horror film, uh, it does what all the best horror films do, which is have great characters and a great story to really get yourself invested in. Uh, and what is effectively a romance story and a really tragic one at that as well. And this movie just, I loved every single minute of it. It's quite a, it's quite a brilliant film and I think there's so many little things about it that really make it work just so well. And is why it's still talked about as one of the great horror films even today. So the story here is following this character of Seth who is played by Jeff Goldblum. And he is this scientist who is working on a teleportation device. Uh, he's got these two different teleporting machines and he's been working with inanimate objects and moving them between but has never got round to moving living things or living tissue. And he ends up meeting this journalist who's played by Gina Davis and she, yeah, they, she's kind of looking for a story within science. She's looking for an exciting new story to bring back to her boss and get herself moving up again. And you know, she kind of follows him along to get more reporting and intrigue about this story. But she also ends up becoming romantically involved with this character. And one day, he starts decides to take his, uh, his science experiment to the next level and attempt to teleport himself. But unfortunately, a small fly, which he doesn't realise, gets stuck in the machine with him and ends up fusing their genetics together. So yeah, it's a pretty wild premise for a film. And it is one that I'd actually put off watching for a little while, mainly because it sounded like quite a depressing story. And not that I like don't like depressing films, but... You know, it's one of those things when you've had a long day or whatever, you have to be in the right mood for those kind of movies. And hearing a story about a guy slowly losing the love of his life as he t gets turned into a fly, it's, it's one of those movies where I really had to find myself in the mood for, which happened to be last night. But yeah, so it, it's, a, it's a harsh, a, a pretty depressing story. But at the same time, it's handled in a way where... There's fun to it as well, as well as being quite emotional in a lot of spots. I didn't really expect that, but it's also a lot of fun as well. And I think a lot of that is to do with Jeff Goldblum's uh, Jeff Goldblum's performance. Uh, he's just so perfectly cast here as this guy, this very sort of eccentric, very enthusiastic scientist who, you know, he lives for his work and he's so like excited to see about the change in the future, what this technology could bring, and he's just absolutely obsessed by it. This very nerdy guy, but at the same time as well, you know, it's Jeff Goldblum. He's also a very charming guy, and it's it's very believable how he could get romantically involved with this character character that Gina Davis plays because he does have these two different sides to him and it makes for a very entertaining character to watch and I found that even once the teleportation happens and he's taken through and he's slowly slowly starting to have this change uh, in his personality even when he knows to some extent his fate is inevitable and he knows where everything is going he still remains somewhat philosophical about everything. He still kind of looks at the, the positive style. He's still able to make jokes and he knows that he was taking risks uh, with these scientific experiments and he kind of accepts that. So there's something about the positivity and the charm of this character that really draws you in and really makes you care about him. And, and in some ways as well, that makes it all the more tragic uh, when you eventually get to the conclusion of this story. And... The one thing that really does get him down and, want, and does touch him is the, the fact that he has this, this close bond with Gina Davis's character. And, you know, the first half of this the film is really about a romance. It's like this couple who are, you know, we're going through reporting on this scientific experiment. It's quite exciting. They're trying different things out. They put baboons through it to see what happens. And that has some pretty gruesome consequences. And... 
yeah, so it's really a love story, and then it goes from that to him, you know, starting to become this different person. His personality starts to change, and initially, it's a good thing where he gains all this extra strength, and he's got this confidence, he's got this insane sex drive, he's and and he seems to be having a great time. He's thinking and talking at a million miles an hour, and then slowly his body starts to deteriorate. Uh, and he starts to realise that uh, what's actually been going on and why this has been happening. There is a lot of very shocking scenes in this film, and some of them really took me by surprise. I mean, you know, if you've seen David Cronenberg films before, you know he loves the very gruesome body horror, does not shy away from anything, and he will, you know, a lot of the scenes that he has done in the past will absolutely disgust you and stay with you. Um... But at the same time as well, he finds very clever ways to kind of surprise you with them. Not not as jump scares, but uh, they just happen. There's things that happen at unexpected moments that make it all the more, more disturbing, I find. And it's unfortunate that I had actually seen the arm wrestling scene before. Uh, it's quite an iconic scene. I had seen that and I expected that coming. It's a great scene, but pretty, pretty disgusting to look at. Um, but there were some other scenes in the film, especially towards the end, that final 15 minutes. And again, spoilers from this point forward, just because I want to talk about this scene. Um, but where he's really deteriorating, he's at the final bit before he has the full transformation and he's about to force Gina Davis into that teleportation machine uh, to kind of make them as one, make them this family uh, of hybrid fly human beings uh, and his body just starts to fall apart, all of his skin and flesh comes off it, it's really shocking, just the way it happens suddenly, uh, oh, it's, it really does stay with you, it's quite, it's really quite a disturbing film, um, very, very gory, but again, it never loses sight of the important stuff of the film, it's not there purely to shock you, it is there to really make you feel devastated for these characters, and even though at the end when he crawls out of that machine and he's in full human-sized fly form, and he looks absolutely horrendous, and when you just see the, the claw kind of lifting the shotgun uh, to his head, uh, it's, it's a very powerful, very emotional scene. Uh, I was really quite quite surprised by it. It's, it's, quite, it's quite an amazing scene. And yeah, there's just so much humanity in that moment, despite the way this, uh, this, this guy has become, the fact that he looks so disfigured, so awful and it's like you know it's it's hard to even watch at moments but it still manages to get that real emotion there because of all the way it's built up these characters and again Gina Davis reaction to this whole thing and her journey of seeing him slowly start to fall apart and her despair at this situation you really feel for this character uh, it, it's an incredible final sequence and again I'm glad I'd never had this spoil for me and I'd never seen any clips of it before because uh, it's one of the best final acts of a horror movie I think I've ever seen Something interesting I really liked actually was this character that John Letts plays, which is Gina Davis' character, ex boyfriend. And he's kind of played as this very unlikable character. He's the ex that won't let go, keeps forcing himself into Gina Davis' life, uh, and just won't accept that the relationship is over. Uh, even though he knows now that she's gone off with this other guy, she's trying to be happy, she wants to get away with him, and he just can't let go. So he's forcing himself into her life. Uh, and he's the guy the whole way through you know something bad is going to happen to him and you feel like you're going to be happy about it because he's this awful character uh, but in the final scenes obviously he gets involved in this situation and the fly Jeff Block Goldblum's character gets the upper hand on him uh, and ends up uh, almost killing him in a very very gruesome uh, and disturbing way and to see how that character deals with the situation where he manages to get himself back up to try and take take the fly out and protect uh you know gina davis character there's something in that moment that's quite like heroic in a way about that and i kind of like that nuance that you get with these characters there's nothing worse than those one-dimensional characters where they're all bad or all good you can't have any in between it's like there's a little moment where you really do feel for this character and you're kind of on his side uh in doing everything he can to protect this woman even though he's lost an arm he's lost a leg and he's having one last final moment to, to do anything he can to protect her. And there's something about that that I just thought was really nicely handled. I genuinely only have the smallest of criticism for the film. And I think it's that I would have liked there to have been a slightly more convincing reason 
as to why Jeff Goldblum goes into the teleportation machine. Uh, you know, obviously, it, he kind of sells it because he comes across as this guy that's really enthusiastic about his science. He's almost willing to give his life for it. So obsessed, he knows he could die in the pursuit of discovery and whatnot. And that's how the film sells it. So it never really feels out of place. But he's the fact that he kind of does it in a, a kind of split decision moment you know it kind of portrays it that he's just had a couple too many drinks and despite the fact that just days before this baboon he sent through was literally turned inside out there's no real reason for him to have to rush this experiment you know his life's going really well he's developed all this amazing technology he's found this beautiful woman that he's getting a really close relationship with and it's like he's potentially about to throw everything away uh, in this one moment that's going to completely put his life in real risk and, and to me it felt a little bit like okay they have to get him in that machine somehow uh, at this early point to, to continue the story so I think maybe it would have been more interesting if they'd added something like having it so that he had an illness or something like that where he was more willing to take the risk I think that would have made it a little bit more believable for me uh, but that's literally the only thing I can really criticise this film on. I thought it's an extremely well-paced horror film. And I get now why this has been remembered, why it's talked about as one of Cronenberg's best. And I'm getting really interested now to maybe see some more of his films because I, I thought this was a phenomenal horror film and one you should definitely check out if you've never seen before. So I'm going to give this one a 4.5 out of 5 rating. So that's all of my thoughts for you on the fly. As always, please do come down into the comments. Let me know all of your thoughts on this movie. Did you enjoy this one? What do you like about it? And what's your favourite Cronenberg movie? Thanks as always for watching this video. Please do consider subscribing to my channel if you want to see more content like this. And I'll see you next time.